Good evening, everyone. It's Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Today, we're going to be speaking about watermelon seeds and cardiovascular health. You're going to learn really with a cardiovascular system. We're going to focus on watermelon seeds and the biological functions and the health benefits. What's the difference between the watermelons with seeds and the watermelons without seeds? The way that they make seedless watermelons is they take the pollen from a male plant and then the flower of the female plant they chemically alter it. So that's how the process takes place. It is modified, it's not genetically modified. So let's begin with the science of the cardiovascular system. The three subsystems are the physical heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. The heart is really a very powerful muscle and it's responsible for pumping blood throughout the entire body. Blood is pumped after it's oxygenated, coming from your lungs, it comes into the heart and it pumps it throughout your entire body. And it's pumping it through these blood vessels. Arteries are the ones that are bringing in the oxygen and they pump it through your body and then the veins are the vessels that pump the deoxygenated blood up to your heart which then pumps it to your lungs the capillaries are the very fine fine vessels where a lot of this very important activity takes place the capillaries are just composed of endothelial cells that's it and they are made of the tunica intima the inner layer consisting of endothelial lining which provides a frictionless pathway for the movement of blood it is these endothelial cells that have to function well for you to have good cardiovascular function the better endothelial function you have the better heart health cardiovascular health you have we're going to be looking at watermelon seeds and cardiovascular health and in order to do that we don't cherry pick the data, we look at what's out there. Well, there's 329 research articles. There have been about three cr clinical trials done on watermelons, and that's over the last 50 years. What we do is we take all that research and then connect the dots to put together the research, and that's all made possible through Cytosol. I wanted to let you know that we use the technology here. We've helped many, many companies over the last 16 years, a lot of smart, innovative companies, but we decided with all the mathematical models we've created, why don't we try to use this to compute the best product we could think of from the science out there for reducing pain and inflammation, pain and discomfort. And that resulted in us creating MV25 using Cytosol. We're going to have more products that are going to be coming, but let me just show you what MV25 is about for those of you who haven't heard about it. But this is using Cytosol in a beneficial way, not to just do research, but find combination therapies. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet and they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. Then I started taking that MB25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it and even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. It's clean food certified, it's made in the US. If you go to bashiva.com right on the shop, you'll click there or you can go right to mv25.life either way. And then from there, you can click on the bottle and you can order. Please take advantage of it because first of all, it's going to help you. It's going to help our movement. And it really supports the fact that we want to take science-based approaches to natural products. So now having understood that, what do watermelon seeds do? Now that you understand the cardiovascular system. So the first part we want to look at is what are the nutrients in watermelon seeds? 26 key molecules, three types of macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, five key minerals, 10 key bioflavonoids, seven key free amino acids acids, four key fatty acids, very, very important. The six key molecules we want to look at that are very, very valuable for cardiovascular health are the apigenin, the beta carotene, the lycopene, the luteolin, the arginine, and the citrulline. The next thing I want to cover is the health benefits of watermelon seeds. So these six subsystems are affected by watermelon seeds, heart health, hair loss, glucose control, metabolic health, bone health, and skin health. The six biological effects, watermelon seeds are antioxidants, they're anti-inflammatory, 
anti-hypertensive, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, and anti-arthrosclerotic. So we're going to look at the anti-hypertensive effect, which is lower hypertension, the anti-diabetic effect, which is obviously related to heart health, and the anti-arthrosclerotic effect, which is related to plaques forming. First, we're going to look at the anti-hypertensive effect. The molecules citrulline and arginine promote nitric oxide production in the presence of enos, like when you exercise. And what happens in the presence is nitric oxide activates this enzyme soluble guanylyl cyclase SGC. So in the presence of citrulline and arginine, EDOS activates nitric oxide, which converts using SGC GTP into CGMP in the smooth muscle cell surrounding the blood vessels. And that leads to their relaxation, vasorelaxation, which promotes the antihypertensive effect in blood cells. Next is the anti-diabetic effect. Number two, the ferulic acid and the quercetin, endothelial dysfunction leads to diabetes. And how does endothelial dysfunction happen when you have superoxide in your body and hydrogen peroxide. These are what are called reactive oxygen species. These are oxidizing agents. And superoxide desmutase blocks this as well as ferulic acid. So what happens is when you eat a watermelon seed, you're getting quercetin and ferulic acid. Ferulic acid directly goes block superoxide and catalase directly blocks hydrogen peroxide. But more importantly, the quercetin produces NRF2 and NRF2 promotes these two antioxidant enzymes, superoxide dismutase and catalase, which blocks the hydrogen peroxide and superoxide. The third is plaque formation, and that's the anti-atherosclerotic effect. Plaque formation leads to arteriosclerosis. When you have this molecule OXLDL adheres to your endothelial cell surface and that's what initiates a plaque formation. So here is your endothelial cell. This OXLDL sticks to it like glue and that starts the plaque formation. That occurs when LDL, which is what they call the low density lipoprotein known as a bad cholesterol, gets oxidized to OXLDL. You don't want this occurring. And this occurs when you have superoxide. The lycopene, the beta carotene, and the quercetin from the watermelon seeds, those three molecules block superoxide. So LDL doesn't convert to XLDL and you don't get the plaque formation. So you've basically learned some three very powerful chemistries here. What does the current science say about how much you should take? If you want to alleviate hypertension, you can take about six grams of watermelon seed extract daily. Six grams. That's from Masa et al. 2016. Now, there are problems with watermelon seeds, okay? And there are three issues to consider. Nothing, as I mentioned, is good or bad. This is when you excessively consume them. For some people, may have kidney stones. Watermelon seeds, excessive consumption can release oxalates, which can lead to kidney stones. Again, excess, okay? Not here to scare people. Too much can lead to digestion of bloating. If you already have an issue with bloating, be aware of this. And phytic acid, poor mineral absorption. You can take the watermelon seeds and you can overnight soak them and sprout them a little bit and that will get rid of the phytic acid. Where should you get your watermelon seeds? The organically grown watermelon seeds are preferred. The conventional grown watermelon seeds may contain over 28 different pesticides that are linked to lung, liver, kidney, and thyroid toxicity and carcinogens. And organic farming produces healthier produce free of pesticides. Remember, when you see the watermelon without real black seeds, that's an indication it's likely not organic. You could have the other ones, by the way, be organic, but remember they're a hybrid. The ideal is the organic seeded watermelon seeds. Okay. That would be my recommendation. By the way, many of you know, it is through your research and your support, our movement worldwide created the certified clean and certified raw labels where we integrated safety, minimally processed and bioavailability of nutrients. The first of its kind, you will see if you go onto many of the health food stores, this clean and raw food seal that was brought to you by our movement. It's the highest level of certification that you can find from farm to table. In summary, watermelon seeds have several benefits, including cardiovascular health, skin health, bone health, hair health, etc. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Shiva Iduray. Before we continue with this, I want to just remind everyone that because of the massive censorship and shadow banning that still continues on social media platforms, I'd like you to click the link to continue watching this on our own platform at vashiva.com. Thank you very much.